Since going public in 1992, Starbucks has grown into one of the world's most successful coffee house chains with over 26,000 stores in 75 countries. Much of the company's success can be attributed to its industry best practice supply chain management. Starbucks' ascendancy in the market in recent years has come under increasing threat from global giant McDonald's, who have diversified into the coffee space through their McCafe offering. I recently met with the Starbucks senior executive team and they were able to shed some light on how they're utilising their supply chain management to remain competitive and sustain growth into the future. Starbucks utilises a push-pull supply chain where coffee and other supplies are pushed to retailers based on demand forecasts and finished products such as our Aventi iced vanilla latte are subsequently pulled by customer orders. Starbucks supply chain is one of the most efficient supply chains in the world, but remains highly responsive to customer demands. We offer a broad menu of coffee beverages and allow customers to create their own off-menu items. We also introduce seasonal drinks, such as the highly popular pumpkin spice latte in October each year, and innovative creations like the unicorn frappuccino, only available if you believe. This aligns with Starbucks' competitive strategy to deliver a quality product and best-in-class customer experience. At Starbucks, we use only the highest quality Arabica coffee beans sourced from plantations across the globe. Once we source the green beans from the plantations, we send them to one of six roasting plants. We have strict procedures for tracking the origins of the beans. Our beans are very important to us and we know that they are very important to our customers. But our customers are not just after taste. Taste is a big factor. But if the beans are not sourced ethically and humanely, we might as well give up now. We have a lot of pride in our beans and also in our harvesting processes. Did you know that coffee beans are the second most traded commodity after oil? And they're subject to significant volatility. At Starbucks, we sought out only the best beans which tend to trade at a negotiated premium about the coffee commodity price dependent on supply and demand at the time of purchase. This can be affected by multiple factors in the producing countries, including weather, natural disasters and crop disease, cost of production, inventory levels, political and economic conditions, and current trading activities in the Arabica coffee futures market, including hedge funds and commodity index funds. To protect against coffee price volatility, we use fixed price and price to be fixed purchase commitments dependent on market conditions to secure an adequate supply of quality green coffee. Fair trade also guarantees coffee growers at a set price prior to harvest, which has led to more privately negotiated deals with coffee corps. At Starbucks, the objective is to ensure a regular and ongoing supply of coffee beans to the stores around the world and reduce stockouts. The inventory management system is closely aligned with the company's supply chain. At the cafe, inventory management involves a combination of office automation and manual monitoring. Inventory is comprised of unroasted coffee, roasted coffee, merchandise and supplies. Levels vary according to the seasonality, commodity market supply and price fluctuations. To maximize the efficiency of our operations and minimize costs, the Starbucks supply chain relies on an accurate demand forecast. To facilitate this, the supply chain team consists of demand planners, supply planners, replenishment planners and, and the commercialization team. They oversee the operations from start to finish to ensure that there are no gaps in the supply chain. Starbucks cafes have high-tech Clover coffee machines which connect to the cloud to communicate the performance of the machines and to track customer preferences. The headquarters can track the trends in real time and be responsive. At Starbucks, we have four coffee plant locations in the US and one in the Netherlands. We also partner globally with many co-manufacturers who produce dairy products, baked goods and paper items for our stores. End products are distributed across nine remote distribution centres, seven of which are operated by third-party logistics companies. Starbucks' retail location strategy fo focuses on urban centres, especially those with large middle and upper class populations, 
Most of our stores are in densely populated areas. Starbucks often uses strategic clustering of cafes in the same geographic area to gain market share and to make it difficult for competitors to enter the market. Starbucks' forward strategy for our facilities is to move to more renewable sources of energy with 149,000 solar panels delivering clean energy to power 600 Starbucks stores in multiple locations across America coming online this year. We are the number one purchaser of renewable electricity in the retail sector for 2016. Starbucks has created and refined a global logistics system. Coffee beans are transported by ocean shipping containers from Latin America, Africa and Asia to the United States and Europe. From port, the unroasted green beans are transported via truck to one of six main storage sites, which is usually at the roasting plants. After processing, roasting and packaging, the finished product is transported via road to regional distribution centres before heading to retail outlets. As a competitive analyst for Starbucks, I do a lot of market research on our main competitors, particularly specialty coffee shops and quick service restaurants. McDonald's is a follower of Starbucks into the industry, having opened its first cafe in Melbourne in 1993. Aligning with its business strategy, McDonald's emphasizes low costs and outsourcing from third-party suppliers. Its highly efficient transport network utilizes third-party logistic providers such as Martin Brower to supply inventory through a dedicated fleet of trucks to centralize distribution centers. McDonald's continues to push the efficient frontier by becoming more responsive to consumers while also lowering costs. In its five largest markets, 75% of the population, or 1 billion potential customers, live within three miles of a McDonald's store. They are rolling out self-supported kiosks to reduce stress on the front counter, provide better order accuracy, and increase customer satisfaction. Starbucks sustainably sources 99% of their coffee, compared to only 37% at McDonald's. However, they have doubts to reach 100% sustainable sourcing by 2020, putting direct competitive pressure on Starbucks. To maintain customer loyalty and reignite growth in same-store sales, we're increasing customer engagement via the Starbucks mobile app. The mobile app allows for a highly responsive customer experience, including personalized purchase recommendations and loyalty discounts anywhere in the world. Having a global platform will become increasingly important as Starbucks expands internationally. China is our largest international market and we're planning to add 500 stores a year there, reaching 5,000 sites in 200 cities by 2021. We're also planning to elevate the brand in the U.S. by opening 20 to 30 new roasteries and a thousand reserve stores, which offer premium products and a premium experience. So now you've heard from the Starbucks senior executive team in terms of how they've successfully built and grown a world-class supply chain. With rapid technological advancements changing the supply chain process, and the rise of strong competitors such as McDonald's, it remains to be seen if Starbucks can replicate previous success stories and create a bright and prosperous future.